Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to do a continuation on the ideal brushed motor for rock crawling, trying to find peak torque. Now, as you saw on one of the last videos where I used the Kelvin wire setup to get the terminal resistance of all the motors, we have them right here. Um, what I'm going to do now is plug in a formula that tells us, uh, and this isn't going to be the exact torque units, but it will tell us the relationship between amps and torque for each of these, and then I'm going to run down. Originally, what I was going to do is make a formula to find the brush resistance plus the resistance of our armature, and then what I thought was find out where that meets in the middle. Where is the brush resistance equal to the armature resistance? That is what I thought was the ideal motor for producing torque as far as brush motor. Now, when I actually ran through it, the, the results that I got on the formula, um, they didn't match up with what I thought that they should be. So we're not gonna do that right now. I need to do some more investigation to figure out. But essentially we have two formulas. So uh, these right here is what it ended up. Right there. So we would have the resistance is equal to the turn count resistance plus the brush resistance. And then if we go to another turn count that's twice the turns i know that the resistance is four times that so we would have the same formula the resistance is equal to four times the resistance of our first one plus the brush and what that gave me depending on which motors i was comparing on that uh somewhere between 16 and 22 milli ohms for the brush part and then the remaining is our armature so this is essentially finding two linear equations and, and where do they cross on our line um, if i did four equations all at the same time they didn't actually cross at the same space so uh, we we couldn't just get one value for it but it was kind of this uh, this in between right here like i said i'm gonna have to do some more investigation to see where this lines up with with the other formulas that i'm gonna do so maybe for another video i've already done a little bit of calculations and again our torque value uh let me preface this with the amount of torque that a motor makes is always depending on the amps. And if a motor is twice as fast, it takes twice the amount of amps to make the same amount of torque. So we can actually figure out based on just, you know, we're going to make some assumptions that our copper fill is the same on here. Uh, we're, we're going to base it off of our 17 turn as being one unit of torque per amp. So one T per amp. And then a 35 turn accordingly would be 2.06 units of torque per amp. A 27 turn is going to be 1.59 units of torque per amp. And a 55 turn is 3.23 units of torque per amp. I know I did those out of order, but bear with me here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards based on the resistances of these motors. And we are going to figure out, okay, where is the amp draw the resistance and our torque creation going to all align. I don't have enough data to do the 550s. I would actually have to convert these all into a KV value and then compare that way because it's, it's really not the turn count that determines our torque, but our KV or equivalent KV for a brushed motor. That's what really, the, that's what determines our torque per amp. Uh, so I'm going to do it the simple way. We're just going to talk about turn counts today and uh, just we're, we're going to make some assumptions so that this is easier. So the first thing that I would like to do is convert all of my resistance values that I have from the 55, uh, uh, the 17 through the 55. So we're going to do 17 turn, 27 turn, 35 turn and 55 turn. And we are going to calculate how many amps that they pull. So we have our resistance. Uh, we're going to assume the voltage is going to be 10 on all of these. And then we're going to get the amps as the result. So our 17 turn resistance was 0.04. Uh, so we're going to uh, call it milli ohms on here. So it'd be 40 milli ohms. It is uh, la, 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 79 milli ohms for the 27 turn. It was 110 milli ohms for the 35 turn, and our 55 turn was 250 milli ohms. So a quarter of an ohm for a 55 turn, that's a lot of resistance. Um, so for our amps, amps times ohms equals volts. We'll write that over here. Amps times 
ohms equals volts. I do believe it's been a few days since I've looked at the equation. Amps times ohms, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's it right there. So uh, we are trying to look for amps. So we are going to divide by amps there. I'm probably gonna end up doing this the long way. So ohms equals volts over amps. So one over ohms equals amps over volts and then we multiply on the top so volts over ohms equals amps there we go i did it the long way for you so we divide our voltage uh, by our ohms and there's our amps uh, using 10 volts as the input it should be pretty easy so 10 divided by 0 0.04 and uh this is assuming that we're not getting into a saturation issue. So like I said, there's gonna be a lot of assumptions on here just so things are easy. So yeah, 250 amps on that 17 term, everything's gonna smoke. <laughs> if we try to do that solder, uh, somewhere around 225 ohms solder just turns into uh, liquid. Let's see, volts divided by amps, 10 volts divided by 0 0.079, 126 we'll call it 127 we'll just round this to whole numbers 127 amps for a 27 turn uh, 10 divided by 110 90 amps for our 35 turn and this is actually where i'm familiar with as far as how many amps these can pull 35 turn if you load it down at 10 volts it will burst 90 amps for a second until it starts getting hot assuming your controller and your wires and your battery will handle it. And then last one, 55 turn, 10 volts divided by 0 0.250, 250 milliohms, that will pull 40 amps. And that is definitely in line with what I know things to be. So now what we want to do, we have our, our T value right here, our torque value, I've already done those. So one torque value for the 17 turn, one point five nine torque value for a 27 turn our 35 turn is 2.06 units of torque per amp and our 55 turn is 3.23 so now all we have to do is run down the line and we see what's up now i know from just crawling that in these sport style motors in a 540 that the 35 turn is actually going to be our peak now is it because the slower motors or the, I'm sorry, the faster motors heat up over time and they have issues keeping up with the load or is it something else? So this will be interesting to see what our numbers tell us it should be and whether they line up with reality. And even on the, uh, even on the dyno, I know the 35 turn in the X or in the sport style, it does produce the maximum for any given voltage. All right. So uh, our torque, we'll call it TC torque calculated is uh, 250 units for that guy. 127 times 1.59 is 201. Our 35 turn is 90 times 2.06. That's 185.4, we'll just call it 185. And then for our 55 turn, it is 40 times 3.23, it's 129. So this is our, our potential here. What this does not account for is brush saturation, magnet saturation, lamination saturation. But as you can see, the faster motor actually will pull more potential torque. So our 17 turn is 250 units, the 27 turn is 201 units, the 35 turn is 185 units, and the 55 turn is 129 units. Again, I know from experience that the 35 turn is actually gonna be the best all around. Um, so the fact that we're getting numbers that implicates that the 17 turn is going to deliver the most torque you know, that, that at least lines up with what the terminal resistance is and how fast that it goes and what that tells us, but it doesn't quite, quite line up with reality. But as you can see, you remember with the brushless video, hopefully, the faster motor will produce more torque as long as your battery and your ESC can keep up. So 
the conclusion for that one was a 20 or a, a 3600 motor with twice the gear down is going to be far far better you know four times the amount of torque at the ground as half of that kv with half of that amount of gear down and the same thing would go for this if we could get enough gear down for a 17 turn motor to work yeah, more than likely, it's actually going to have better performance on the ground, assuming that it doesn't overheat and we're not running into saturation. What is probably going to be the case on this is we're going to find that somewhere around, you know, 180 to 200 units of torque that the motor just doesn't produce anymore. So anything above that is only heat. So if the 35 turn is slightly below this saturation figure, it's actually going to be the best suited because it's not producing only heat it's producing essentially only torque and when you go faster this extra amp draw that gets added on is only producing anything but heat uh, you know it's a zero percent efficiency added to our equation but as you can at least see right here theoretically the 17 turn motor is going to produce the most amount now this is where i'm going to have to do a little bit of thought there's not exactly like a brushed motor book that's available anymore on this. If you're an old racer, you probably remember back in the day that yeah, the 27 turn produces more torque than a 17 turn does. And it's going to be fairly self-evident to you. But in a racing situation, you couldn't go too slow because then you wouldn't have the wheel speed enough. You couldn't just gear down infinitely and infinitely. It just wouldn't produce enough torque for you. So we do know that there's a golden zone with brushed motors somewhere around you know let's just say in between 27 and 35 turn that is the actual golden zone for torque based on the old racers based on what i've done with my dyno based on me just being on the rocks and knowing how that they feel when you go through a load so this didn't give me the exact results that I thought that it would, which is a good thing. It means that I need to do some more investigations. It also is telling me that, you know, maybe this brush resistance figure and what I think it's supposed to do isn't exactly what's going on. So my assumption, like I said before, was that when the coil resistance is equal to our brush resistance, that that's when we're going to produce the most amount of torque. But I know you know, our brushes don't change resistance. So if they're all at, you know, 22 milliohms, then it's really going to be more like four or five times the amount of resistance in the armature versus the coils. And maybe that's what just keeps it from getting into saturation. Maybe that's actually what's going on is that we want to find that golden zone of where the motor just simply can't saturate itself because it doesn't pull enough amps. It doesn't produce or try to produce too much torque to get into that saturation zone. Uh, now with the 55 turn obviously it's going to produce enough torque but it may not have enough wheel speed for you so that's the thing that we always have to watch out for and if i'm going to make a summary of this video based on what i know and my recommendations is going to be you don't want too fast of a brush motor you really don't want too fast of a brushless motor either uh, it's really going to depend on that gear down but in a brushed motor when you get too fast like a 17 turn if you try to throw that into a crawler and you didn't have nearly enough gear down it's just going to smoke we know this from experience and uh, i can just tell you that right now <laughs> so yeah there we go there's the numbers there is uh, what the direct measurements that we made from the resistance of the motors and our our formula of you know amps times ohms equals volts tells us we know how much it's going to pull in amperage in a stall situation we know the relationship of the torque output based on the turns and it gave us a bunch of numbers that didn't really line up with my expectations so something else is going on i guess this is when i'm going to have to build probably a test jig and put all of these on let's say 10 volts and then see okay where is our torque threshold there's going to be a point uh, we could even step up the volts on it and see you know where's the point to where we don't get more torque on the outside we're only giving you know we're pushing more voltage we're pulling more amperage but it's not actually resulting in more torque and we could do that with just like a, a, a an arm on the armature itself you know on the output shaft pressing on to a uh you know a, a one of those things that, that do the weight for you what are they called a, a scale there you go that would be one way to do it so maybe i'll build a little uh, static torque stand there or there's there's tons of ways we could do it we could you know you can we could have it pulling on a fish scale or something like that so yeah this will be a kind of a long-term project we'll just continue kind of beating on this subject and see where we get so 
I am sorry if that was a little too technical and you don't have any questions because it, it went like this, but hopefully this, you know, at least leads you to some of the ways that I think about motors and you may have some questions. If you do, leave them down below. I hope this maybe shed some light on it for you or maybe confused you completely and that's okay too. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.